Welcome to this fantastic meeting about improvisation and drama used in education. Uh, the issue of this meeting is a um, conference which will start next week. Uh, my name is Christian Freisleben. I'm working at the uh, University of Applied Sciences in St. Pölten in Austria and I'm also working freelancing as trainer and teacher in the fields of education, health and social affairs. And I would like to, um, I, I'm asking Stephanie to introduce herself and to tell us about this Congress shortly. Please, Stephanie. Yeah, hi, hi Christian. Um, this conference, um, conference on drama and theater in foreign and second language teaching takes place next week in Reutlingen, Germany. And we have invited teachers, researchers and theater, drama and improv practitioners to um, come to Reutlingen to talk about this subject. A really great conference, so join into this conference. And we have now a fantastic guest here um, in this uh, session. And I would like uh, I would like to ask Thomas to introduce yourself, please. Okay, my name is uh, Tomas Andrasik, and I'm from Brno, Czech Republic. I te I'm teacher, trainer, and PhD student at Masaryka at uh, the Faculty of Education, Department of English Language. And um, I teach uh, uh, two subjects based on improv. One is aimed at uh, personal and social development. And the second, uh, probably more interesting for this conference, is uh, using uh, improv in, uh, um, in teaching English uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, lowering anxiety from uh, speaking foreign language and uh, um, to build up the self-confidence in the foreign language. Uh, a part of that, I'm also a uh, kind of freelance uh, trainer. I am into experiential learning and uh, drama. Uh, so that's basically about me. Yes. And I'm glad to be here at this conference. OK. Um, so um, what is the effect of using uh, impro or drama methods on teaching? What are your, your key findings after you used it for some time? Um, shall I stick to um, the effect of improv to um, teaching foreign language, or um, I can be more general? No, okay. language and general as also, well, also please, yes. <laughs> so, both, yeah, I okay. guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my experience is that uh, it helps a lot uh, uh, to people to feel more relaxed in the classroom and uh, to enjoy the classes, to be more involved, uh, to have a stronger experience, and uh, to have fun, uh, which um, I believe helps a lot to learning. And uh, in improv, um, it's uh, uh, it's like they don't even notice they speak English. Uh, they can communicate uh, um, without uh, thinking so much about mistakes, about uh, problems they can have in communication. Because the focus on is on the communication, on the matter you would like to communicate, not on the language. Uh, which is, uh, I think, a very, very powerful tool. Um, so, uh, but colleagues looking at you, and you are telling them, I'm using improv or theater in teaching. Don't they look a bit curious at you and say, wow, what, what, what is that about learning and teaching? You have to teach, not to play. Or are you... Oh, yeah. Are your colleagues very <laughs> supportive? <laughs> uh, well, in fact, uh, I have a great boss uh, at our department uh, who is very, very supportive. And uh, drama has uh, a tradition in our department because there is one colleague um, who does uh, a lot of structured drama. So there was only a small step to introduce improv. Uh, and uh, we, we started to use it uh, at experiential learning courses, which uh, um, our department organizes uh, in each term uh, for a week, where students go to outdoors um, uh, through experiential learning activities. They learn English this way. And we 
uh, introduce also drama and improv um, uh, during these courses. And because the feedback from students was so positive, uh, then um, we decided to also create a course for improv. And uh, right now I have feedback from students. And uh, I think uh, we kind of can say they, they have learned many things. They, they don't say they, they learn, I know many uh, new um, uh, words, they learned uh, grammar structures, uh, but they feel more self-confident, more fluent in speaking. They can um, uh, they improve their listening, they can understand to other people much better. They are not so afraid and not so uh, kind of in stress when uh, they are supposed to speak English, uh, which were basically the goals we put for this course. And are your students, um, are they all going to be teachers or what subjects do they study? Uh, most of the students uh, in my subject uh, this year were future English teachers. But uh, the, this course is offered to the whole university. So for example, a person from Faculty of Arts or from the uh, or someone who studies biology can apply for this course and uh, go through it. We have minimum language level, it's uh, between B1 and B2. So we ask people uh, to have some knowledge of English um, to be able to join the group. Because uh, it would be very difficult to work with people who have, for example, A1 and uh, then C1 level. OK, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I can imagine that the future English teachers are have more of an idea already what they could use this for, why this is useful for them. Did you have any biology students in 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 this class now? And if so, how 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 did they find it? Um, well, I have uh, I had uh, one uh, student of. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm not confusing my two subjects on improv now uh, because uh, they were very close to each other. But uh, I had uh, uh, definitely some. I'm not sure. I, I I'm not sure if I can answer you now uh, okay. uh, if there was a sp special biology student. But, no, uh, just anyone who who was not going to be an English teacher. Yeah. So what? Okay, what they, did they these say? These people reacted. To, uh, uh, they they came because they wanted to empower their English skills. And they said uh, it helped them uh, a lot to be more self-confident and th that they feel more fluent after the course. That was basically the feedback. Um, because they were interested only in developing their English skills, not in uh, uh, like learning something for methodology of teaching English. Uh, but the students who are, uh, who are possible English teachers, they were more interested in, to, in uh, methodology, in... Uh, you know, some kind of theory behind uh, behind uh, improv and and uh, such. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting point. Um, how do you choose the methods? How do you choose the tools? And how do you explain these methods and tools to your students? Yeah. Um, one of the first uh, thing or the first basis for me is experiential learning because uh, drama is just a um, just a part of experiential learning. So I use the uh, theory of Kolb's learning cycle, and uh, uh, the next thing, um, although no one uh, proved or uh, disproved Krashen's uh, the uh, theories, I believe in. Uh, in this uh, possibility to acquire language from uh, nature-like environment, from the simulations that are, in fact, a uh, very important thing what we do uh, in the beginning of the course is to create a safe environment. So the people are not in stress, they, they feel okay uh, about making mistakes, which is very important. And uh, uh, once they are over uh, the stress uh, from mistakes, uh, then they uh, start to experiment with the language. They really hear what other people say. They really communicate, and it's uh, it's somehow um, without noticing uh, the language is uh, entering uh, their brains. Uh, for me, it's uh, very uh, very strong because uh, 
basically I have learned le uh, English this way. So I'm a lot uh, relying on my own experience and then uh, for example Crashing uh, theories uh, uh, sound very good for, uh, sound very like um, uh, I really can uh, can agree with uh, with with uh, these theories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Um, so, um, what if? Okay. So you you um, you emphasize the safe environment, having fun, overcoming fears. Um, how about if you had a skeptical colleague who said, "Well, and what are they learning?" I mean, you said they learn without realizing that they learn but how how would you explain that to to skeptical colleagues who would say yes fun is all very well but yeah C could you also con convince someone who's skeptical <laughs> well i'm working on that uh, uh, <laughs> what we started to do is that uh, uh, we asked students after each lesson to uh, write uh, a journal a diary uh, as a as a kind of feedback where they try to reflect what they, what they have learned during uh, during the lesson. We also, I some some sometime, uh, sometimes sometimes uh, uh, created some demonstrations of uh, of what we do, and uh, improv can be used uh, uh, um, in a great way. For example, for drilling uh, tenses. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you are familiar with game. What are you doing, uh, <laughs> Mister? Uh, it, it's uh, kind of uh, present continuous uh, drill, and then um, then. Uh, in fact, I haven't met a colleague who would uh, who would say this that uh, they are not learning. Uh, we have discussions over uh, like if they are uh, they are learning grammar or uh, syntax or uh, these uh, things. Some some people think that uh, um, if uh, we use uh, language with mistakes, we then learn the mistakes. But uh, I have read the re research. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure about the author, but uh, I can find him later, uh, where, where he found out that uh, even if people are using uh, language mistakes, or if they are not, it doesn't influence uh, the correctness uh, of, of their language in future. I'm trying to rely on what the students say, uh, what, uh, on their feedback, on what they write, uh, and uh, uh, from that uh, to to tell the colleagues what we do in fact <laughs> okay yeah. uh, I, I I also find um, hints in the literature about that that making mistakes is helping you learning uh, mm. uh, uh, language um, so um, I hear from you that the reflection and the debriefing is a, in, a very important part that has to be planned also and, and I think that's one key thing for success of using theater uh, and drama and improv in education is the good planning, where you plan how do how, which which is the content I want to teach, how will I do it, cho choosing the the tool, and afterwards talking with the students, what did you learn, and 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 making also results visible. Would you uh, agree to that? Very much. Um, in fact, uh, our class has uh, two and a, and a half of an hour, and we spend always uh, 30 to 45 minutes uh, reflecting, debriefing, and even during the classes after each, uh, 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 not always after each exercise, but very often we just stop and have some kind of uh, reflection debriefing, which is uh, it, it's the most important principle of the experiential learning. Um, in order to learn, we need to reflect. And uh, without it, uh, just to do drama, uh, without reflection, it would be playing, uh, as you said before. But uh, we need to, uh, uh, we need to mm, um, catch this experience and uh, think about it uh, to um, 
Uh, in fact, that's the place where the students can uh, realize what they have learned. Those uh, things that are during the activities going unconsciously to their brains during the debriefings and uh, reviews, they can uh, say, oh, yet yeah, I have learned this or that. Uh, so without re reflection, um, it would lose, I, I don't know, 50% of its uh, effectivity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, there are also people who are teaching tech technical studies. And they say, well, I have engineers and they won't play. If I say uh, them to play, they won't say, are you crazy? I, I won't play because I'm an engineer and I'm very important and I'm doing lots of... Uh, yeah, stuff, so, uh, I'm uh, not going to jump around the classroom or, I don't know, yeah. walk on my four legs or play a dog or whatever. So, <laughs> have you ever encountered such situations? Um, I think it's always about uh, the personality of the trainer. Uh, uh, last week we had a workshop uh, or the whole day team building for top management of one uh, pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And these were people... I don't know, around between uh, 30 and 60. Uh, we did uh, also some uh, some very short drama activities, but uh, because the whole team building was based on experiential learning, our attitude to it was that this is a great thing. It's not a silly jumping around the classroom, but we really think that uh, this will give you something. Then those people, I was so uh, I was even surprised that they were so in so much into it. Uh, of course, uh, for some of them, it's like uh, going out from their comfort zone, and it's, uh, especially if they are managers or people in very important positions, for, uh, sometimes uh, it's threatened to lose the face. But once uh, we are able to build a safe uh, environment, which is always something we must start with, especially with the people you have mentioned, uh, if you spend two classes on building this safe environment, then the people realize it's okay to play, and they love to play. And uh, I... It's very hard to meet people who, when they are really allowed to play, who will refuse. People are just uh, threatened of losing their face, or uh, that the other people will have uh, will make fun of them. But uh, once we establish environment in our groups uh, uh, in uh, in the safe way, then uh, I believe um, that they are just very rare, uh, rare. Um, where personalities will refuse. And uh, yeah, that's maybe true. Drama is not completely for everybody. But it, uh, in general, for I don't know, a group of students in a technical school, uh, um, I believe uh, it will work. There might be one or two people who really are not tactile and uh, who really don't like to move or uh, have uh, really different learning styles. Uh, then this can happen. But I don't believe it can work for the whole group. Because um, uh, it, if it's a um, faculty of arts, if it's faculty of education, if it's some technical field, the people are always different and, uh, on the other hand, uh, always the same. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I, I couldn't put it better. <laughs> That's also my experiences. Mm -hmm. So, Stephanie, do you have another question? Um, do I have another question? Let me just think. Um, yeah, you already said that you had a tradition of drama at your university, which I guess is, is very helpful. Um, and you said that the tradition was more for structured drama and that the improv was n now the, the new thing, right? Um, so I guess that that is helpful. Um, do you have, I don't know if, 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 if you can answer this question uh, spontaneously and, and briefly, um, if you had to decide what helps more? <laughs> yeah, probably a bit of a provocative question. Um, does structured drama help more for a language acquisition or improvised playing? I guess the answer will be both can help for different things, but, but what would your view be? Um, well, I like to combine them. They really have different goals. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, through well-built structured drama, you can uh, uh, you can help with vocabulary. You can um, stick uh, to a topic. Uh, I know you need to deal with I know health and uh, whatever. So then you build structured drama on this. You need to discuss uh, family relationships. Then uh, you build structured drama on family relationships. Uh, so it's more focused, I would say. Uh, 
but uh, the improve uh, I think it, it helps uh, very much with everyday communica mm -hmm. communicative skills and in structured drama there is a lot of improve so yeah my answer would be the goals are different yeah. I like both methods and I, I like to combine them mm, yeah it would be the same for me actually yeah that's <laughs> fantastic and at the end of this session I can't resist to uh, to make um, to uh, make a, a game, we will now play a word by word game, so that people looking at us uh, will see what this whole uh, drama or improv is about. So we are playing a word by word game, um, and uh, 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 wrapping up this session. So okay. I will start. Um, improvisation is. Four. Very helpful. Improving in learning outside a classroom and in manner that. Of freedom. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So uh, we couldn't have uh, planned this, um, and I like this sort of association games very much, and they are very very helpful also for learning and for learning languages especially. So, uh, Thomas. You stay on then after I switch down the recording and I will um, say lots of thank you and I'm really grateful to, to have met you because it's always fantastic to hear someone uh, talking like I'm talking and um, not, uh, not oh, what's that? So I'm very, very grateful for meeting you and, and thank, you, thank you very much for your time and also for Stephanie, who put up this whole thing yeah. and, and Thank you both. Uh, said, well, we will do that. And so uh, anybody who is looking at this um, recording, uh, please feel free to put in comments and literature and uh, hints and um, comments and, and so on. So it's a part of this, um, of, of, uh, of this Congress. Um, so feel free to to put in other videos or video comments or written comments um, and so it's also I will now declare it a part, as part of my PhD uh, work uh, kind uh, named Improflea. So thank you very much and I will now end the recording just a second.